Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope you've had an awesome weekend. In this lesson, we're going to be going through Euclidean geometry. So we've been doing a bit of Euclidean geometry already. And if you recall, I taught you about maths being fun, maths being fun. And I know it's just a teacher's sad attempt at trying to indulge me and try and make, bring you into it and hope, hope you enjoy it. Okay, but let me explain what it is. Okay, just in case you've forgotten. The F stands for corresponding angles. Okay, in other words, if you can find any shape that looks like this, or like this, or even like that, where, oopsie, not like that, where the, where the two lines are parallel, where the two lines are parallel, then we have what are called corresponding angles, and those angles are equal, but that only works if these two lines are parallel. Those two lines are parallel, okay? U is for co interior angles and do you remember the co-interior angles are special because this one plus this one equaled 180 degrees so the co-interior angles are supplementary and again remember that this only works if these two lines are parallel and then finally you've got the n um, which could also be a Z or whatever, and or funny too. This angle here is equal to that angle. And remember I told you they were alternate, not alternative, alternate, okay? And that again only works if these two lines are parallel. So that's what I showed you last week. Now we're going to practice that or put that into practice by finding out the values of Y, R, P, X, and S. Okay, so let's start with angle X. We see that, let me just highlight the two lines that are parallel. Do you see that this line here is parallel to this line here? Okay, that line there is parallel to this line here. Okay, so since those two lines are parallel, we can say that, okay, fine, if that's the case, this angle here has to equal that angle because we've got that beautiful Z shaped or N shape, okay? So therefore, we're going to say X equals 60 degrees. Why? Because they're alternate angles. And grade 10s, what important is almost more important than actually finding the value is having the reason. You can't just randomly say, oh, it's 60 degrees. You need to be able to tell me why. Okay, so that is definitely 60 degrees. Since that's 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and this is 90 degrees, do you agree that S is actually really easy to find? Okay, because this is a straight line. So if that's 90 and that's 60, we can just subtract this 19 and 60 from 180 and we'll get s so we can say angle s is equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees plus 60 degrees because do you understand or do you remember that this year showed that this was perpendicular so therefore that angle there is 90 degrees okay so there we've got and what is this sorry this is supplementary angles supplementary or you could say, if you wanted to, you could also say angles on a straight line. That would be perfect, okay? So that's going to be 180 degrees minus 150 degrees, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so therefore this angle here is 30 degrees. That's 30 degrees. Okay, now let's see what else we can do. What about Y? Let's look what we can do with Y. I'm just going to change color here just for fun. Do you see that Y, if we draw this over here, do you see that Y is actually part of that U? It's like a funny shaped U. It's an upside down U. And what do we know about the U? We know the U is co-interior and they add up to 180 degrees. So therefore we can say that this year, this Y plus the 160 degrees has to add up to 180. So therefore we can say Y is gonna be 180 degrees 
minus 160 degrees, which is just 20 degrees. And why? You have to say it's co interior angles. And you don't even have to say it's supplementary if you've said it's co interior because all co interior angles are supplementary. So that angle there is 20 degrees. Right now, there are two ways we can get R, okay? The one way of getting R, well, there are a couple more, but the two most obvious ways. The one way is to realize, let me just get another color here, let's get purple, that this here is a straight line, okay? That that the E, this angle, and F is a straight line. So therefore, oh, I saw in a couple more ways. Okay, <laughs> therefore, all of this has to add up to 180 degrees. And if that's 20, then this must be 160. Another way is to realize that this year, this year is an F. Okay, that's a funny F there. If I just color it in a little bit more so you can see where I'm drawing. That there is an F and therefore they are corresponding angles and therefore they're equal. It doesn't matter which way you go as long as you get it right. Okay, so therefore we can say R, let's do the corresponding, is equal to 160 degrees corresponding angles. Okay. And finally, we've got P. Now, again, there are two ways to get P. The one way is to, yeah, the one way is to realize that this is a straight line again, or another way that we haven't used yet, which we could use, is to realize that these two we've used green. What have we not used? Let's use this dark red. These two angles, yeah, are vertically opposite. And what's special about vertical opposite angles? They are equal. So therefore we can say angle P is equal to 20 degrees vertically opposite. Now, grade 10, it is fine with me, more than fine with me and all your teachers, if you do this in a different order. Okay, or and if you do because you did in different order, you might end up with slightly different reasons. If your math, if your reasons are mathematically valid, okay, and unless the teacher asks you to do it in a specific way or in a specific order, which means they're looking for a specific way to do it, it doesn't matter. If they just say found all the angles with all the letters, that's fine, and you can do it any order you want, whatever you see first. And like I said, as long as it's mathematically correct, no problems, okay? So for example, another way that we could have got S over here, look here, just to show you. Um, let's do dark blue. Yeah, we had 60 degrees for X. Another way we could have got S is to realize, well, this is 90 degrees. How do we know that? Well, if this is 90 degrees, that means that's 90 degrees. Therefore, we could have said that S was equal to 90 degrees minus 60 degrees, which equals 30 degrees. And why? Because it's complementary. And why is it complementary? Just to show you, complementary. Because angle BCG, BCG is equal to 90 degrees. And therefore, they have to add up to 90 degrees. So that's just another way you could have done it. Okay, you could have got this angle and then gone, well, they're alternate, etc., etc. There are hundreds of ways. Well, not hundreds, but there are quite a lot of ways that you can solve this. Okay, so there you go. Right, now let's talk triangles. Okay, so first of all, you need to know the different types of triangles because sometimes they won't label them, but they will say, and triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle with whatever. So you need to know what we mean when we say that. Okay, so first of all, the scaling triangle. The scaling triangle is the triangle that is a bit obnoxious. No, I'm kidding. The scaling triangle has all sides have different lengths. Okay, it's an individual. Have different lengths. And, and all the angles are different in size, obviously. Different in size. In other words, there's nothing equal in lengths and angles, okay, with a scaling triangle. An isosceles triangle has got two equal sides, 
which means that their base angles have to be equal. Okay. Equilateral triangles, equilateral makes sense to you that equilateral means that all three sides are equal in length. And therefore, we can say, therefore, that all three angles are equal. And therefore, they must equal. 60 degrees. Unfortunately for you guys, you actually need to learn this. But the cool thing is that once you've been using it for quite a few times, and in fact, probably you guys already know all these off by heart, but if not, learn them, you do need to know them. Okay, so for example, in a more complicated geometric question or geometry question, or even a trigonometry question, they might say triangle DEF is equilateral. And you must just know that if they're equilateral, all the angles are equal and all the angles equal 60 degrees, okay? Or they could say to prove that triangle PQR is equilateral, then you need to know what the properties of an equilateral triangle are. Why are all these angles equal to 60 degrees? Well, the rule is that all the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. All the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. That's your rule. Okay, right angle triangles, well, that's pretty obvious. They therefore have a one right angle. Okay, and obviously the side opposite is called the hypotenuse. And it is always the longest side. Always the longest side. Right, moving on. Angles of a triangle, the sum of the angles of a triangle, there we go, always add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so that you need to understand, okay? And just to show you where it comes from, what it actually comes from is a quadrilateral. Any shape quadrilateral has to have all the angles add up to 360 degrees. But if we split this in half, it doesn't matter how we split it. Do you agree we have two triangles? Therefore, this half has to have all the angles at up to 180 degrees, and this half has to have all the angles at up to 180 degrees. So therefore, you can take any shape, and if you can break it down into triangles, and you need to know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, you can work out how many angles there are in that shape. For example, let's say I have got something that looks like this. Okay, it's a trapezium. Do you agree I could break it up one, two, there we go. It says one, two, three, four. Okay, so there are definitely four triangles there. Okay, so I can go four times 180. So that becomes not four, eight, or 32, carry three, four, and four, that's seven, 120 degrees. So all the angles in the shape have to add up to 720 degrees. Okay. Now, the other rule is exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles. In other words, 1 plus 2 equals 3. Okay, but that makes sense. Think about it, okay? Let's say that this is, I don't know, 50 degrees, okay? And this is 70 degrees. Okay, do you agree that this angle here is going to be 180 degrees minus 50 plus 70 degrees? Because all the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees, right? So that's 180 degrees minus 120 degrees, right? 5 and 7 is 12, which then leaves 60 degrees. So this angle here is 60 degrees. Okay, which means that this angle, angle three, this is not a straight line. Do you agree? Hang on, let me just show you. Change color. Do you agree that that there is a straight line? That's a straight line. The angles in the straight line are 180 degrees. So angle three is going to be 180 degrees minus the 60 degrees over here that we just worked out which equals 120 degrees, which happens to be the sum of B angle one and angle two. It makes sense, right? So therefore the rule is that the exterior angle is the sum of the two interior 
opposite angles. So by doing that, we're kind of just skipping out this step here and then that step there. We're just saying it equals 120. Theorem of Pythagoras. Theorem Pythagoras the theorem said that, and I'm not going to go through the proof because it's not required, okay, that the short, the square of the short side plus the square of the short second short side will always equal the square of the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse, okay. So he said that if we know the length of A, let's call this 3, and if we know the length of B, let's say this 4, we can always find out the length of C or vice versa. Okay, and I'll show you how to do the vice versa in a minute. So if we're working out C, we'd go 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to C squared. 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16 is equal to C squared. So C squared equals 25. So C is obviously equal to 5. Admittedly, it's plus or minus 5, but we're looking at a length here. Yeah? So therefore, it'll be 5. What happens if I gave you, I gave you the, um, the hypotenuse on one other side? Let's say I said to you, that this was 13 and I said that this was 5 and I said I wanted B. Do you agree that I could rearrange just to say C squared minus A squared is equal to B squared? C squared minus A squared equals B squared, right? So what is C? C is 13, so we've got 13 squared minus A, which is 5 squared is going to be b squared, right? 13 squared is 169 minus b squared is 25, I mean a squared, which is b squared. So that's a 4, that's a 4, that's a 1 is equal to b squared. So do you agree that b is the square root of 144, which is plus or minus 12, but since we want the length, it just has to be plus 12. There you go, and that's another special and triangle, by the way, 5, 12, 13. Okay, now let's talk congruent triangles. What you need to understand about congruent triangles is that these are triangles that I can put on top of each other and they will cover each other completely. So if you had to take your hands and cover, put them together, they cover each other, okay? So that would look like congruent speed, but it's not. And I'll tell you why it's not. It's because we actually have to put the mirror images up against each other. Okay, and so I'm saying congruency is not when you flip them over to match, it's when we can slide them over each other and maybe twist them around a little bit, but it's not a flip. Okay, please understand that. So one of the one of the properties or one of the cases for congruency is side, side, side. In other words, if we've got this triangle ABC, and we've got this triangle, DEF, okay? Then we, the way we would do this, if we wanted to prove it was congruent, we'd say in a triangle ABC and triangle DEF, okay? We have that AB equals DE. AB is equal to DE. And what you need to notice is that this is going from through the short side, okay, and this is going through the short side, but this A to B is going from the short side that is side connected to the two, two second length one to B, which is connected to the third length one. D is a similar, it's basically the same, it's A, it's D is going through the short length, but starts at the join with the second length, and ends at E, which is at the end of the short length, but next to the third length, okay? In other words, I'm going through these in the same order. Next, we can say that AC, AC is equal to DF, DF. And by the way, the reason for this, in this case, is because it's given. They actually told us that these were equal, okay? And we can see that BC, BC, is equal to EF, EF. So you can see the order, BC, EF, okay? BC is equal to EF. Again, it's given. Therefore, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF 
And the reason would be side, side, side. Okay. Now, there are a couple of other things I need to point out to you. One is that the thing that looks like an equal sign, but with a third line, that's congruency. The thing that looks like two, like wicked pole, I mean, cricket poles without the little things at the top, that is, this is similarity. Don't get the con too confused, okay? Similarity. Whereas these are congruent, okay? What's the difference? Similarity means the triangles are similar. In other words, they might be similar in shape, okay? Congruency means I can actually take the one triangle and put it over the other one. I can slide it across and cover it entirely. It is identical, okay? And this is the case, and you always have to give a case for congruency, which in this case is side, 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 okay? Now, Again, if we have to do this, and let's get more creative, let's call this the F, um, H, not that more creative am I, H, I, J, and K, L, M, I'll start making up words later. Okay, so again, if we're doing this, we're going to go in the triangle, now we want to do it in the same order every time. So let's go through the double line, the angle, and the single line, so I'm going to go J, H, I, J H I and again through the double line through the angle and through the single line so it's going to be M K L okay through the double line through the angle through the single line J H I through the double line through the angle through the single line okay they're in the right order do you agree that J H equals M K See how much easier it is once you get this in the right order. If this is in the right order, then proving these things or writing them down is so easy because it is in the right order then. So JH is equal to MK. Why? Because it's given. Okay. Um, angle H equals angle K. H equals angle K. Y given. Okay. And then HI is equal to KL. So HI is equal to KL. Y given again. Okay, and I'm going to write it to the top here. Therefore, triangle JHI is congruent to triangle MKL, and the reason is side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Okay. What you need to understand is because of these be two triangles being congruent, we can now tell this. We know that therefore this angle here is going to be equal to that angle, that this angle here is equal to that angle. And if these two sides are equal and this side is this equal to this, that this side has to be equal to this side. Okay, do you understand that? That's why this is so important, is because if I can prove that these two triangles are congruent, then if I know what size I is, I'll know what size L is. If I know how long IJ is, I know how long LM is. There you go. Right, let's look at another case for congruency. Please note that this was side, angle, side. This is a side with an enclosed angle. Yeah, we've got two angles and an enclosed side, and that's important. Two angles and an enclosed side. So again, let's see, we've got as far as M. So let's do M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. I know, I'm going to run out of letters very soon. Okay, so if we look at these, we now have in a triangle. So I'm going to go dot dash plus okay so it's going to be n o p n o p and triangle again dot dash plus so guys remember that in these cases we're actually showing you what they are so because we're showing you what they are um in other words we're proving it to you it looks very obvious but it might in the it might look like something like this it might be q R S, there's the dot, there's the line, there's the plus. Okay, it might be something like that. Okay, you need to understand that it could be like that. Okay, so in triangle, in this case, it's Q R S, okay, dot, line, pl plus sign. Okay, we have angle N 
is equal to angle N and that is given, I don't know why I'm putting equal sign, it's given. We have angle O is equal to angle R given, okay? Then we have angle line no, see that? No, no, is equal to line QR, QR, Y, given. Therefore, and I'm writing it on the side here, triangle NOP is congruent to triangle QRS, and the reason is angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. Okay, two angles on the side. Right. The last one, I think it's the last one. Yes, the last one is the most obvious one. It's right angle apart on your side. Okay, it's pretty obvious. Okay, it's obvious that if this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is 90 degrees and this side is equal to this side, then it's obvious that these two are going to be, um, and sorry, and that this side here is equal to this side, then it's obvious that they are going to be congruent. And again, this is how you would write it out. You'd say in triangle, how far did we get? We got as far as S, T, okay, T, U, V, W, X, Y, W, X, Y. Okay, so in triangle T, U, V, so I'm going single line, 90 degrees, nothing and triangle single line 90 degrees nothing so it's going to be w x y okay u is equal to x which equals 90 degrees given okay tu is equal to w x okay given and tv TV is equal to WI, WI given. And the reason, yeah, you'd think it'd be two sides on the angle, but it's not the reason. You'd say, therefore, triangle TUV is congruent to triangle WXYY, right angle hypotenuse side. Right angle hypotenuse side. Okay, so now let's look at these and remember, if so, under what conditions? Okay, it says, are these triangles con congruent? If so, under what conditions? So let's think about what the conditions were. Let's go through them again once more. You've got side, 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 enclosed angle, side, angle, angle, side, right angle, apart, new side. Okay, right. So you've got side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, and right angle, apart, new side. Okay, so do you agree that this line here equals that line there? Okay, and we've got this line here is equal to this line here, right? And we have that, no, wrong color. This angle here is equal to this angle. Why? Because they are vertically opposite angles. Therefore, they are definitely congruent because they are side, angle, side. So now let's write it out. We would write it out like this. We'd go in triangles and we start with B, double line, angle, single line. Okay, so it's B, C, A and triangle, double line, angle, single line, D, C, E. Do you agree that BC is equal to DC, always in the same order? Can't be CD, because then you'd be going out. It has to be in the same order. Okay, and that's given. Right. We have that CA is equal to CE. So you don't even have to read it off here. We've got it already. CA is equal to CE, Y given. And we could say angle C is equal to angle C, because they are vertically opposite angles, vertically opposite angles. Therefore, triangle BCA is congruent with triangle DCE and Y side angle side. Here you go. Proven. Okay. Now let's look at this one. 
Again, what are our options? Our options are right angle hypotenuse side, 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 uh, side, angle, side, and angle, angle, side. Okay, right. So now, what do we have? Do you agree that we've got this side is common? Okay. We have that this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, so therefore these two must be equal. So we've got angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. That'll work. It doesn't have to be an enclosed side, but it works. Okay. So we go, okay, fine. In triangle ABC, in triangle ABC, ABC, and triangle, now I have to be in the same order. So it's dot, angle, cross, dot, angle, cross. It's going to be triangle A, D, C. Angle A equals angle A. Sorry, I have to cough to say. Sorry, spring. Why? Because it's given. Then angle B equals angle D. Why? Because it's given. We also know that AC is equal to AC. Why? Because it's common. Therefore, therefore, you can see that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC and a reason would be angle angle side angle angle side there we go angle angle side so it doesn't have to have the third angle I just proved it showed it to you anyway okay now let's talk similar triangles so what did I say about similar triangles similar triangles have got the same angles but they are different in size, okay? So in other words, they're mini me. So they can be fitted over, but don't fit exactly. So if I had to take, say for example, uh, this is three centimeters long, and this is one centimeter long, then what happens is I could move this over to over here. If I could get this wrong right. And then this would be D, and this would be E, and this would be F. So it would fit over the big triangle, okay? And this would be equal to this. That would be equal to that, and that obviously is equal to that. So that's what we say when we say that two triangles are, sim are similar. We say that angle, 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 all three angles are equal. It might be that long, it might be this long, we don't know. I could have also put it over the other way. I could have done, okay, wait, let's just erase the link. I could have moved it over this way so that it sat like this, okay, where this was E, that was D, and this was F, and then this would look like the little star, and that would be look be the same angle as that. And what's special about that is that this side, therefore, is going to be parallel to that side. It has to be. If that angle is equal to that angle, and that angle is equal to that angle, then we can say, well, those are obviously corresponding angles. And if they're corresponding angles, it means that they are equal. Okay. So, we said the triangles that are similar are equiangular, which means they have equal angles. Now, what's special about the two triangles that I've just shown you is that if tri triangles are similar, their sides taken in order will also be in proportion. So, let's go back here. In other words, um, if, for example, this whole thing here is two and Okay, let's write it properly. Two, and I tell you that this is one. Okay, one. I don't know why my pen's doing this. Then if I tell you that this here is three and a half in length, how long do you think DF is going to be? Well, do you agree that the ratio of A to B is two to D to E, which is one? Two to one. The big triangle has got two two units long and the little triangle is one unit long okay so do you agree it's a ratio of two to one so in other words the big triangles double the length of the little triangle so if that's the case so that's the ratio we're looking at then if this one here is three and a half 
sorry, let's make it three. If this is three and a half, then do you agree that this is going to be one and a half? That's going to be one and a half because it's a ratio of two to one. Okay, so again, what we're saying is that if this length here, first of all, do you agree that these two triangles are similar? How can we do it? How can we prove it? Well, do you agree that that's 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees, right? They give you that this is a double line and that's also a double line, which means that this has to equal this because this is equal to 180 degrees minus the 19 minus the double line. This is 180 degrees minus a 19 minus a double line. Okay, so they have to be equiangular and therefore they have to, have to, have to be similar. So now, if I tell you that FD is uh, four units long and I tell you that AC is one unit long. I don't know, I'm just randomly making these up. Okay, do you agree the ratio then is four to one? This is four times longer than this one. If I then tell you that this is eight, let's pretend that that is eight. How long do you think this is going to be? Okay, do you agree the ratio is four to one? The big triangle is four times bigger than the small triangle in this side, which means this eight is going to be four times bigger than the BC, which means that eight is equal to four times the length of BC. So what does BC have to be? Therefore, BC has to equal to two. BC has to equal to two, okay? So let's have a look at these, okay? What we've just said is if triangles are similar, then we know that their angles are equal. We also know that if triangles are similar, then their sides are in proportion but that works both ways. If the sides are in proportion, in, sorry, proportion, then the triangles are similar. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Do you agree that this here is 36 and that there is 64? Okay, so those two are in a ratio. So that is 36 over 64. So do you agree I can divide both of those by nine? Nine goes into 36, sorry, four. Four goes into 36 nine times. Four goes into 64, let's think. Four goes into six once, remained at two. Four goes into six, I mean 24, six times. So it's nine over 16. So the ratio of 36 to 64 is nine over 16. Now let's look at these two sides. These two sides, let's give it green. 18 to 32, okay? So these are in a ratio of 18 to 32. Okay, so we're only looking at the ratio. Is the ratio the same there? Okay, so let's divide this by two and that by two. So I get nine over two goes into 32, 16 times. Yay! So the ratios are the same and therefore, yes, the triangles are similar. Okay, grade tens, we are going to start with the midpoint theorem on Wednesday. I hope you've had a good day and that you've learned a lot and I trust that you will be back with us on Wednesday. Have a great day.